Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek. I'm here with Yao Zen from Blue Piper, and you've brought us Glyph Chess, which was uh, a much discussion about pieces before we went live with this one. And I'm glad to see the visual lives up to the expectation. Wow. Thank you. Uh, so this game is Glyph Chess. Uh, it's uh, basically it's a chess, but a, a magical version of the chess. It's adapted from a Chinese comic book called Tessilia. So in that book, they, it's a magical word, and they do have this chess as a, a game's popular well, among wizards. So we just took the idea, developed developed it into an actual board game. So in this game, uh, you have seven different pieces, and uh, the very can you grab the scepter? So this is uh, like uh, the the most important piece to win this game. You there are two ways to win the game. You will either use any of your piece to take the opponent's scepter. The by taking it just means it just a uh, move and uh, land on the spot where it's located and you take it. <laughs> or you have you move your own scepter into the center spot and stay there for one turn, and you will win the game. So two ways. And for the scepter, it does not really have any additional special abilities, but all other pieces, each one represents a wizard, and uh, each one of them have two spells. Yeah, so this is a summoner. Summoner summon minions. This is a false mage. He can do uh, area damage and mass, uh, yeah, mass damage. This one is the illusionist. He can create a replica. And uh, this one is the necromancer. He can revive other pieces. This is a series. Uh, any one piece is in her size. They cannot use spells. And the last one is the elemental list. So he, anyone killed by him will be burned into ashes and cannot be revived. Whew. Yeah, I can, I'm not going to go too details about uh, how each one acts, so, but I will roughly explain how the game works. So unlike regular chesses, anything you take in this game will have to consume Resources. There are two types of resources in this game. Uh, first is called Glyph Dice, and uh, it's a public resource, and everyone will be able to use it. Yeah, so once you roll them, this is your current uh, dice pool, and you cannot re roll it until the pool is being used. So, for example, if I use two purple Glyph Dice and I have to consume them, and I roll the only two used ones, and pass the exactly same pool to my uh, opponent. So which means whatever resources my opponent has access to is decided by me. And the second uh, resource is called Glyph Coins. It's your personal resources. Uh, you, the other players will not be able to know what you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty much it. And on your turn, you will have to take one of two actions. So either cast a spell or move a piece. But uh, for cast a spell, uh, you will have to fulfill whatever requirement described on the cards of each uh, piece. So uh, not this one, it's a minion. So can we grab another one? <laughs> Yeah, for example, for the false mage, the first spell is a passive one, which means I don't need to cast it, it's always on. But second one, I can consume one coin, which has to be a false mage coin, and X false mage dice, uh, which means I can, which makes me able to move X balls and kill everyone adjacent. So that's the mass uh, damage of this piece. Yeah, so that's an example. So for casting spell, for movement, you just consume any combination of dice or coins as long as they're of the same icons uh, as your the piece you want to move. 
Yeah, so it's really a chess-like game with some flavor of magical thing, but at the same time, it's a, a resource management game. What was the inspiration for wanting to do such intricate pieces? I mean, you, you, you could have done something really, really simple and flat. What, mm -hmm. what inspired you guys to want to make such just impressively tall and, and detailed minis? Yo, so the, our studio is a little bit weird combination. Our main business is actually game uh, toy design. Ah. So we, 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 we design our toys. And we also own a factory in China, which means we do uh, we can take uh, orders for other customers. That's our main business, and uh, so it's not that hard and uh, expensive for me if I want to do this a little bit crazy <laughs> miniatures. <laughs> yeah, so basically that's just my, just my taste. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that's yep. as good of a reason as any. <laughs> I wanted to, and I have the resources done. <laughs> yep. So if anyone is interested in this kind of production, and we can totally help them with that. We take orders and do uh, mass productions as well. And if people are interested in Glyph Chess, though, how would they be able to, to purchase it? Uh, we, I think, uh, we are selling them at Spiel. And also, we have a distributor called Surfing Meeple to help us distribute this game in Europe. Uh, that's the last print of this game. And we, we already sent all the remaining games to Europe. Uh, that's pretty much it. We're not going to reprint this game anymore because uh, it's a little bit costly to create these uh, big, <laughs> big, big, large pieces. Yeah, that's why we move on to our next project, which is Zuliwood. Excellent. Well, if you guys want to check out Zuliwood, which was our last video, or Glyph Chess, which is this one, this is from Blue Piper Studios. And how, thank you so much for giving us a quick tour and giving us a little behind the scenes of what it's like to develop some of these. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.